there a saying that like three's a crowd or something like that? But you know what? In reverse harems, three is not even enough. You know, give me all the crowds. I love reverse harems. I've really, really fallen in love with that sub genre of romance recently. It's nice to kind of like switch things up in between all the books where it's just like two characters. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I want to follow five characters or four characters. I want to follow more all falling in love and being in a relationship together. So if you are not familiar with what reverse harems are, so reverse harem romance is where we have one heroine and she has a harem of men. So ranging anywhere, I think, what's the biggest one that I've read? Normally it's between like three to like four five heroes. I know it can like get up there and be like way more, especially when you get into like Omega verses. Um, I did not, I didn't put an Omega verse on this list today. I do have one, but like when I narrowed it down, that did just slightly miss the cut. I have tons of reverse harem recommendations though. So if you want another video of this, I can definitely do another one. Sometimes the men can also get um, involved with each other, which I love. I love a little sword crossing. That is when the men also, you know, um, have a relationship with each other. I got uh, seven recommendations for you today and this was my narrowed down list, so I can definitely do more. I typically like to keep my rec videos a little smaller so it's less overwhelming for you guys when you're watching them, less like recs to just like pile on you at once. So anyways, let's jump in. So first up, we have one of my favorites on this list. This is a dark reverse harem, heavy bullying, lots of dub con in this situation and that is lords of pain by samantha rue and angel lawson this is a trilogy there are spin-off books now i have not read any of those so this one follows story and she has a stepbrother his dad married her mom in high school and killian just from the very beginning did not like story and he made that very apparent and there was a little um interaction between Killian and story and his two best friends Tristan and Wrath that um didn't go the greatest and story ends up running away for a multitude of reasons that you find out so they're separated for some time but then they are now all in college and Story has been away at another university, but she has run into some trouble. So she is coming back home and she is going to be attending the same university that Killian, Tristan and Rath all attend and they are lords. So it's kind of like a frat house, I guess, but this is like, I don't want to say like mafia frat, but it's like, it's not like typical frat. So anyways, the lords every single year, they pick one lady that is going to be their lady for the whole year. And she basically just does whatever they tell her to do. And they like audition these ladies and unbeknownst to them, Story walks through the door to audition to be their lady for the year. And they did not know that she was coming, but the three of them have not gotten her out of their heads. And you know, it goes from there. Heavy bullying in this one. Story has motives for going to go be a lady and the Lords also have a motive for making her their lady, which like you, you find out as you go. It is enemies to lovers. She does not, she's not there because she loves the three of them. She is there because she has her own needs that she needs to seek out. And anyways, it's like, it's very toxic. It is a toxic ass trilogy, but I loved it. I love the relationship progression between Story and the three guys. It's very like back and forth, hot and cold, up and down with all three of them all the way throughout the trilogy. I love it, a very toxic good time. So let's just go into another toxic one and that is Carnage by Sarah Bailey. So this is the first book in the Four Horsemen series. I've only read the first two. I still need to get around to reading the last two, but this one follows Scarlet. Uh, what are the dudes names? Drake, Prescott, Francis, and West because it's like famine, war, pestilence and death, you know, like that, that kind of vibe, all their names. In the present day, when this book starts, the four guys are super wealthy billionaire men. They have like this whole empire. They're not afraid to get their hands dirty to get what they want kind of deal. And they are looking to bring in a new assistant and Scarlett walks in to interview for them. And as soon as they see Scarlett, they know who she is, but she has no idea who they are. And that is because they all, these five used to all be best friends when they were younger. And there was an accident that you don't know about even by the second book you still don't know what fully happened <laughs> but there was an accident and she lost her memory and her parents like took her away stole her away and have kept her like really isolated they've been like horrible people to her just really shitty and they are sending her in to infiltrate the four horsemen but she is not aware that these four dudes used to be like her ride or dies anyways she becomes their assistant so it's like boss employee-esque 
um, but then also like childhood best friends to enemies to lovers but then also like amnesia trope. There's just like a whole lot of stuff piled up in here. So here's the thing with this book. If you remember, if you watched my monthly wrap up when I talked about this, this book frustrates the hell out of me. This series does in general. There are so many things that we don't have answers to. I finished the second book. I'm like now however many hundreds of pages deep in the series and I still don't have like answers about so many things. But the reason that I'm still recommending it is because I would still recommend it. It's a hot fun time. And when I'm reading this, I, I'm just reading for the enjoyment of it. You know, I read for vibes here and the vibes are on with this one. The plot is extremely frustrating because you are kept in the dark for so long. But I think the third book is supposed to give you answers. But here's the thing why I would recommend recommend the first two books is because it's a fun toxic time okay strong enemies to lovers scarlet doesn't want to want them but she does want them so she wants them even when she's hating them it's hot the guys are into some interesting stuff that they introduce scarlet to and you know what it's just it's an enjoyable time okay i enjoyed my time reading these two even when i was very frustrated with the plot development so i would still recommend them just know that going into it that if you are one of those people where you put plot kind of like above everything else maybe i don't know if this would be like the exact book for you at this moment i think maybe like once it all comes together it'll be like cooler but when i only have these first two books perspective i would say i'm very frustrated with the plot but the spice is just, ooh, it's immaculate. And I just love the dynamic between the four characters and Scarlet. It's just, oh, it's enjoyable. All right, next up on my list, we have a monster book. I still need to read the second book of this. It literally came out the other month and I haven't read it yet. But that is A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor by Catherine Moon. So this one is a monster reverse harem. So this one follows Esther and she is a human. And she's living, I don't even really know what the world is. She's living in this world where there are just like monsters around having fun. She loves to enjoy herself and she doesn't see why women can't just like enjoy themselves you know she's kind of like why do we have to like pretend that we don't like what we like and i'm like you know what esther props to you i agree why can't women just like enjoy what they want to enjoy so she gets a job at the rooksgrave manor where basically she can um, do whatever activities with whatever patrons come through the door and enjoy herself. So yeah, this manor is basically just for women to be able to work there and indulge the customers only when they want to and what they want to do. Um, and it's a fun time. And there she gets a little harem of monsters going in this book. Okay, there is some like other plot stuff that happens, but like, I don't know. I feel like all you really need to know is that it's monster reverse harem and it's a fun time. There, with it being like in this world with like monsters and stuff, there is like a subplot of like maybe like a threat coming in you know that kind of stuff but it's just really for the most part it's just fun it's just a fun read i love all the different monsters there like there's like a invisible type man there's like a stone man there's like a is isn't he like a werewolf man or something like it's just it's a fun little roster that esther has just it's so creative i would say this book is just so creative some of the scenes that happen i'm like wow that shit truly is groundbreaking like that is that is new it's fresh it's fun I love it okay next let's throw a little bit of a lighter one in terms of like well because the earlier ones that I talked about not as much Rook's Grave Manor but like the other ones are like bully very toxic um I mean this one is toxic but in a different way it's more like toxic in like a and more of like an after kind of way if that makes sense so Groupie by CM Stunnich. So this one is a rock star reverse harem and we follow Lilith in this one. And this is also a trilogy, um, three books following all the same characters. Very easy to get through. They're pretty short. I want to say they're like around 250 pages each. So very bingeable, super bingeable. So this one follows Lilith. And at the beginning of this book, she is extremely down on her luck. I think it was her last parent to die. One of her parents just died. It's a maybe her dad that died who was like her ride or die kind of parent. And her mother is like off and remarried and maybe is like disown disowned her at this point, kind of. Sorry, I'm kind of blanking right now of what her circumstances are. But basically she's like homeless. She had just broken up with her boyfriend. She's living out of her car basically and she has like no money, no nowhere to go, nothing to do. She can't even like make her way to wherever she needs to get to for her parents' funeral. She's just very, she's very down on her luck. But she did have these 
concert tickets to go see Beauty and Lies that she is trying to sell to make some money. And she ends up out in this parking lot with her car after her car. Something happens to her car where even like that her car breaks down, like homegirl is so down bad. And as she's walking through the, the like deserted parking lot, she runs into this mysterious man who's like, oh, you found me, congratulations. And she's kind of like, what? And he's like, you won the contest and gives her a backstage pass and a ticket after she had like just sold her tickets. And she's kind of like, you know what? I was going to leave, but I just got this VIP pass. What the hell? Let me like go and enjoy this concert because my life literally can't get any worse. And she goes in and she ends up meeting the members of Beauty and Lies and they end up swooping her off of her feet. And she goes on tour with them throughout this series. So it's five members of Beauty and Lies to her one person. This one does have sword crossing in it. I don't think it comes into play until the second or third book. But here's the thing, the band has so many issues between the five of them. There's like lots of fighting between them. They have like a lot of baggage, like certain relationships are really, really tainted. And Lilith comes in and she kind of becomes the person that helps them work through some of that. But still, it's a very toxic time. But it's toxic in the way that it's just like, I don't know, it's like, it's fun toxic. It's not like bullying. It's just like, they're just messy. It's messy. That's the best way I can describe this. But I love it. I love that they're on the road. I personally love rock star romances. So I love that you get all of that elements from like the music side of it. You also have Lilith who is just down bad. And some of the band members, oh, like Ransom in this one. Oh, he is such a sad boy. He's a sad boy. And I love a sad boy. This, this series is just so fun. And the group activities are just, Mm, chef's kiss. Next up, we got another dark one, and that is The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. So this one follows Winnie. So this is a verse harem Peter Pan retelling slash like inspired story. It's obviously, do not think like Disney G rated though when you think of this though. Oof. Winnie is one of the darling women and she is turning 18. And there's a thing with the darling women that every year or every generation on the darling women's 18th birthday days Peter Pan comes and steals them away and when they come back they are never the same like their minds are like not the same and her mother has done everything in her power to try to prevent Peter Pan from coming and taking Winnie when she turns 18 but when Winnie turns 18 guess who shows up and steals her away and her mom all of her mom's work was basically in vain and she ends up going to Neverland and she's taken there and there she meets the Lost Boys and it's a reverse harem between Peter Pan and his Lost Boys. So Peter Pan takes the Darling Woman for a reason, which you do find out over the course of it. So it's also like captor captive vibes, you know, and enemies to lovers. It's definitely darker. Um, no sword crossing in this one. Again, it's quick. The second book is out as well. The third one is not yet, but both of them are like, they're like novella length, maybe around like 150 ish pages. So quick to get through, just fun. I love Disney inspired retellings. Uh, so this like just hit the mark and you still get like the magical kind of elements. Like it has Faye in it, which I really enjoy. Like if you're a fantasy reader and you like Faye, I think you'd like that. Even if you're not a fantasy reader, I think that this would be a good like introduction to it maybe because you get like some like fantasy elements some lore but like really not that much it's like very minimal so it's not like you're sitting there and like having to learn like this whole new world and rules and it's very familiar with like all the spice in it i love this one i love how the plot is heading throughout the course of the three books here like i'm very excited to read the third book and get some more answers and yeah i just i really enjoyed this one next up i wanted a light one for y'all so in case if you i mean i feel like if you're here you tend to like darker romance because that's pretty much all that I read. Not all that I read, but I read a lot of dark romance. So I do feel like if you're here watching my videos, you probably also like dark romances. But I did want like one lighter one. So that way, if you're not in the mood for like a bully dark reverse harem, I wanted to have one that's like a little bit of a lighter option for you. So Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. Don't let the cartoon cover fool you. This is still hot. Uh, so this one follows Layla and she has a lingerie business, a small business. She's a small business owner and she has gone on so many first dates and she is really like, what am I doing wrong? 
why can't I get a second date with these men? So one night she's like just venting to her three roommates across the hall, which are Zach, Luke, and Josh. And they all have a podcast and their podcast is kind of like flailing a little bit. They're getting some like heat from other podcasts. Their company that they like work with is kind of like it's getting a little stale. Like you need to like do something about this. So they proposed the idea of let's fake date Layla and kind of make it like an experiment. So, like seeing what is she doing wrong. They're going to date her and find out, you know, like what she's doing on her end, how they can like improve her game a little bit, that kind of deal. And obviously, so it is like fake dating, but obviously those feelings don't stay fake for long. So this is much lighter hearted, okay? Like the three guys and her, they just have like a much more fun relationship dynamic. Yes, there are moments of like vulnerability and emotional punches, but it still overall has a very light tone, a little bit more I would say like rom-com-esque. My only gripe with this one was that it's really long. It's like 500 something pages and it like got a little long towards the end, but the writing is so like light and easy to follow that it does make it go by really quickly. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for something like with a little bit more like humor and just like lighthearted, you know, maybe something more for like a summer read, I would definitely recommend this one. And lastly, so we read this one for the Out of Bounds book club last month and oh, I can't wait. I have the second book downloaded on my Kindle. I can't wait to keep going in it. And that is, uh, Oh no, not Cold Dark Souls, Cruel Black Hearts. That's the first one, book one by Candace Wondrak. So this one follows Stella and she has a blog or like writes for a newspaper with a column and she writes all about serial killers. She is obsessed with serial killers. And her blog attracts a lot of attention because of that, but she she's just like a bit of an oddball. She doesn't really fit in. She doesn't really have a lot of friends. She's kind of like a loner. And her blog ends up attracting the attention of Ed, who has a roommate, Lincoln, who they've been besties since the beginning. And they, um, yeah, they are serial killers. And Stella attracts Edward's attention. So he goes out to a bar one night to try to meet her and he does. And she is not aware obviously of who he is or what he does, but they hit it off. He takes her back home. They, you know, have a little night together. Lincoln shows up, who is Edward's roommate and who also happens to be a cop. And, you know, they start a little situation together, but Stella is not aware of what they do, at least for like the beginning part of the book. I don't really want to spoil anything. She is not like really aware of who she is in bed with. They, you know, they just, they, they do what serial killers do. In this book in particular, you are only following the three of them. Now here's the thing. There is a fourth character that I believe is going to be a part of the harem in the second book. I can't spoil anything because like the end, there's like a little reveal, a little plot twist. So I can't give that away, but I do think it's going to turn into like a three to one reverse harem ratio. It's very dark, but I'm very excited to keep going, especially after that ending. That ending like left on such like a, oh, what the fuck kind of note. So yeah, I can't wait to keep going in this series. That is the seven reverse hair recommendations that I wanted to give you guys today. Obviously, like I said, I do have more. So if you want another video, let me know. Also, let me know if there are any other tropes that you want me to do. Like I have like lists going of ones. It's just when I prioritize them and upload them. So if there's a trope that you guys like really want to see sooner, let me know and I can definitely bump that up my list. But yeah, that's it for today and I will see you when I see ya.